welcome back. Um, I've had um, a couple of people comment um, that they would like a tutorial on how I do my faux leather um, journal covers. So I thought I'll do it. I mean, there's you know lots of tutorials out there, and I'm no expert. I don't claim to be, um, but I just thought I would share with you guys how I create mine. Um, to get started, you're going to need a 9 by 12 manila envelope, or whatever size you want to make your journal. That's what we're going to use today, because that's my last one. <laughs> I've got some scrap um, cotton fabric, and then this is some 2 ounce polyester wadding. Um, and then you're going to need <clears throat> the Kiwi Shine and Protect um, shoe polish. Uh, that's how, what I use, so I'm going to have to stop this and start it quite a bit because I'm going to do some machine stitching, um, but you guys can just follow along and hopefully, you know, maybe I can pass on something to you that I've learned um, because this is a, <clears throat> a really quick uh, process and I think the result is really, really nice. So, um, anyways, let's get started. Um, the only thing I'd say with this, you know, you when you push it down to get some of that polish coming out, um, <clears throat> if you're if you're not careful, and I'll do it over here to show you, it will leave a bit of a circle if you don't get that moving pretty quick. Um, I don't even know why I've done this because I'm going to cover that up with fabric. But anyways, um, that's the only thing. And obviously, don't. Um, rub on these envelopes too much because it's paper and if you do it's going to start pulling some of that fiber off so just try to go <clears throat> you know lightly and quickly see you guys can already see see that's giving it kind of that um, impression of the where the ink's coming out but sometimes you just can't avoid it and to be honest I usually come back and, and cover the inside anyway so I'm not that bothered about it but just little things like that to be aware of it's a super quick process and I'll, once you've let this dry um, or shoot it with your heat gun whatever I'm just going to let it dry naturally and then come back and finish it off in a couple of parts um, you can um, once it's completely dried you can then go back over it to darken it because it, it's really nice if you could get two um, coats of this, it'll give it a really nice leather look to it, um, and it's it offers a bit of a protective coat. Um, I'm not going to say it's it's as good a coat as if you were to mod podge, but I don't like um, the mod podge. I think you guys know that by now. I try. I don't, I'm not a fan of it, but. Um, so on this side we are going to cover the uh, flap because that's going to you know, fold over so you want to see that. But the inside I will reinforce it with some fabric and we'll, we'll, I'll show you all that. Um, but yeah, I, um, I can't recall who I originally found the tutorial on this using this from. Because it's been years ago now. Um, if I run across it, I will definitely link her because I try to give credit, you know, to whoever's behind these things. I, I'm afraid I'm not so original that I come up with many ideas on my own. Most of them have sprung from somebody else's hard work, and um, and then my brain takes it and and goes in a sometimes a different direction, sometimes, you know, very similar, but I try as best I can to um, to give credit to anybody that, you know, it, particularly if it's in a specific design, because there are some really talented folks out there creating journals, and sometimes it's it might even just be me watching um, a wall hanging craft or card and I think oh wow wouldn't that be a fabulous journal cover and then you know you just take little ideas from there but um, 
Yeah, that's interesting where we all get our inspiration from. Okay, guys, that's pretty well coated. Um, I like to let this dry for a little bit. Gosh, uh, time-wise, I just don't know. I would say you'd probably want to give it a good 30 minutes and check it. You can kind of feel, because um, it'll. you can just feel when it's completely dry. And you could always shoot this with some... Um, with a heat gun, but I would say this, I, I wouldn't get too close with it because whatever chemicals are in this, I don't want to be held responsible if that catches fire, so maybe you shouldn't use a heat gun. <laughs> Just let it dry naturally, I'd say at least 30 minutes to let it, and then we'll go back over it and give it another, um, another one, but I will come back when I'm putting the second coat on and, and we'll go through that because you will have to be a little bit more careful on you know applying pressure otherwise you're going to start ripping this up so anyways I will be back you know once it's dry so I'll see you guys in a second okay guys uh, that's dried and we're going to go ahead and put another coat I'm not going to um, worry about the middle part of this because um, this is going to be the inside of the journal and I know I'm going to cover this with um, some designer scrapbook paper so I am just going to do along the edge and just to get that darkened up a bit and it also you know does protect the journal a bit more and you'll notice with the second coat you're starting to get a bit more shine to it which makes it look more like leather. So I'm happy with that. Let's get this front done. Just very lightly go over this um, so we don't pull any of that back up. What's really pretty too is, is when you've let all this dry, if it's a small enough journal cover, you can run that back through your embossing folder and that is beautiful because then you really start to see um, some nice textures with it because that embossing machine, when that runs through there, you're going to it's going to distress it more so that it looks more like an aged piece of leather. Um, but unfortunately, I, you know, with these big ones, you can't do that because it's, uh, it's, well, I can't, I don't know if they make a, I'm not aware of an embossing folder that, that they've created that's large enough to do something this size, but, but you guys are creative. I'm sure somebody out there can figure out a way to put a nice impression in here without, uh, needing a, a big shot or a folder. I'm sure there's ways of doing it. I just haven't explored it. So, Okay, so anyways, I will be back. I'm going to let this dry, guys, and I'll be back and we'll start working on some more. Okay, guys, this is completely dried. <clears throat> you can see it's it's got a really nice color to it. Um, I've not tried to do three coats, but I suppose, you know, if you're Want a, a richer, you could try for three, but I would definitely make sure you dry that completely between applications. All right, so what I'm what I've done now, um, the next step would be to take your <coughs> wadding and then measure that out and cut it because what we're going to do is just slide that inside. Um, and I hope you guys can see. I let me try to zoom out a little bit more. I think. Yeah, that's as far as I can go. Really sorry. I'm, I am working on trying to get my camera um, some different things done in here because I know a couple of people have said the lighting's not great, so I apologize, guys. Uh, I will be hopefully updating some of this in the next month. Um, so anyways, I've got the wadding inside. You can see it's overhanging. That's no problem because we're going to run this through the machine, and then we've still got a few more steps to go with it. Um, I just, you know, 
keep a little bit of a gap there. So I'm going to try and move my camera over to the, mach the machine and uh, we'll try to film that. I don't know. I've not tried this before, guys, so bear with me. Let's see if we can do it. Be right back. Okay, guys, I don't uh, know how much you can see, but that is, I've worked around, and that's the best I can do for filming this. So, um, so I'm just going to do the um, straight <coughs> stitch on this, and I'll let it record for a bit, and then I'll uh, shut it off, and then you guys can just see the end result. But just, uh, it really doesn't matter. I, I would personally stitch it you know your cover upright because otherwise you're, you're going to have that you know the underneath isn't as pretty so we're going to start in this corner and just I'm just I'm not going to I'm going to try not to be too too accurate because you guys know I have a problem with that but I'm trying to let loose so got so much junk on my space here. I'm always getting caught up. Okay, I'm going to have to move you out just a bit while I make this turn. I would normally do this when it's actually stitching, but I was I would have bumped the camera. Okay, so you guys get an idea. I'm going to shut this off and I'll show you at the end what it looks like. Okay guys, I'm back. Um, this is what it, it looks like at this point. I've stitched that along there. Tried not to be too, too straight with it because I wanted it to have a real rustic look to it. Now I know I'm going to go ahead and try to get this kind of closed where I think about there is where I'm going to have that folded. And then we will, don't worry about that being too straight because we're going to come back and once it's the, I'm completely done, we'll start working with that and softening up that because I've I've come to really not like these straight, uh, the spine to be like that. I like it more rounded. Um, that's just personal, personal preference for me. Let me turn this over now so you don't have to look at that mess. Now, this is the next thing. This really needs reinforcing because you're going to be, that's going to take a lot of strain when you wrap that over. Um, so I, I, what I've started doing <clears throat> is just take your old scrap piece of uh, fabric. Now it is going to show, so you know you want to be conscious of that. If maybe if you want a bit of a design, um, but the best way to do this that I found, and I hope it's going to show up, um, lay this edge so that it's we want this edge to come about here you don't want it laying right on that fold because it has you know that's not going to reinforce it at all so we know we want that material probably about an inch in maybe even a bit more it's not going to hurt to have a little bit more because it's all going to get covered up with your designer paper and at this point I just do a little pencil mark there um, you guys will find out I, I probably work a little different than everybody else, but I always, I, you know, I just 
you just want to get that cut and then we're then we'll come back after it's stitched we'll come back and um, clean up those edges because it's going to have to be cut around that um, but don't stress too much about about it at the moment because if that if we run that right up there, see, we can come back and then trim it down after it's stitched. I just think it's a little bit easier once it's sewn to do that. So you try to do it now, and it's all floppy. And So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to run back to the machine, and I am going to lay that there. Now, if you want it, if you're not too confident, um, just put you a little bit of Fabri-Tac just to hold that, but let that Fabri-Tac dry because I learned. Trust me, um, I've used that machine when that Fabri-Tac's not completely dry, and that's a major no-no because you're going to replace that blade. <laughs> so anyways, if you do use some glue, let that dry, and then what we're going to do is just come in here and stitch around because remembering your cover, if you run a stitch up here, it's not going to matter because, well, number one, it's supposed to all look rustic anyways, but you can cover that with your collaging later and I'll show you. We might I might just go through and do a whole I probably will. What the heck? So I'll show you. That's not going to matter. So run you a stitch here, then take that machine and run it around here and don't worry that it's perfect. Just try to get along that edge as best you can. And if you really want to make it secure, you could do a zigzag. It's just I personally like this the straight stitch. Um, with the leather. I don't know why. I just prefer it. But you could run a zigzag and that will totally secure that uh, flap there. So I'll be back to show you what it, what it looks like when it's... Hey everybody. Okay. So I've stitched that there. So now I'm just going to come back and you're going to laugh. I've got to get some fabric scissors. Mine have just absolutely had it, so I'm just going to have to use whatever's sharpest, and these are at the moment. Just very carefully <coughs> trim along that envelope flap any excess fabric that's uh, hanging over. Oh, I must get to town and get get some scissors. This is just getting so bad. I um, started out with about five nice ones and the husband gets into the middle of a project and he needs a pair of scissors. Well, you know what he goes for. Oh boy, how do I get angry over that? Because you guys know those fabric scissors are so expensive. Um, okay, so I'm just going to chuck that down. I'll back in that later. I'm such a slob when I craft, honestly. Okay, <clears throat> I'm happy with that. Um, let's see. Now, with regards to the, where the center. I don't, like I said to you guys, that's something that's, that really bugs me now. I don't like it to be a straight line. I'm really starting to try to work and get these a bit more rounded. And You, you know, you can just play with it and, and get that to round up a bit. And obviously it'll make a difference. If you've got two signatures in there, you're almost going to end up with a, probably a half of an inch spine like there anyways. If it's a single signature, you know, you'll have to probably work with it, otherwise it's going to have a tendency to go back and do that. But this will flip over there, and I really like the way that looks. I'll show you guys up close. It's got a real rustic look to it. It feels beautiful. And the other thing you guys have probably seen <clears throat> lately, and this is not my idea, um, Two okay guys, um, yeah sorry I got distracted there. This um, placement of the Tim Holtz metal piece, 
Uh, what I've been doing the last couple of journals, I know you've only seen one, but I have another one I've got uh, filmed. I just can't show it right now. Um, I've been using this metal piece as <coughs> um, it, to kind of hold my ribbon in place, and I'll, I'll show you. But this is not my idea. Um, this was um, inspired by... Um, Kristen's underscore creations on Instagram. Now, I don't know. You guys are more savvy about this than me. I don't know how to find her on YouTube, I'm sure. In her bio, I couldn't find a YouTube link, so I don't know if she's on YouTube. I don't know if she's in any of our junk journal um, groups on Facebook, but if you guys know her, please, please, please message me so I can follow her. She had a uh, journal that I spotted on there, and although she hadn't used it the way I did, um, she had it turned this way on the flap, and oh wow, I was just blown away. And, and of course, as I was playing around, I realized for me I could put my, um, this isn't the lace I'll use, but I started putting my lace under, and then um, you can either stitch this, on, or you can put some brads and then have that wrapped around to where you can tie it over here. But anyways, we'll get to that. So I did. I just wanted to make sure you guys know um, she is the one that's behind that inspiration. So, okay, guys, let me get some stuff and we will start decorating this cover. Okay, guys, uh, back. Um, this is probably the longest part of the process. Well, probably for for most people, definitely for me, is deciding um, how I want to collage something. And s sometimes I end up printing out numerous things. You know, I think one thing's going to work, and then I end up having to swap it around. But having said that, whatever you decide, um, I print mine on cardstock because I just like to give as much durability to the covers as I can. And my, you know, with building that up on the front and then covering this in the back, you'll achieve that. Now, I don't, I never decorate this until the very end, and, and you'll understand why. Because oftentimes I'll do the collage and <clears throat> physically stitch it to the cover. That's not always possible. It depends on how thick it is because I don't have a heavy-duty machine. But anyways, we'll just get started. Um, you know, it's just hit or miss. You, you know, everybody's style's different. I just play around with things I've got in my stash. Like I said, it, most of the time I have to mess around with things, you know, three, four, five times before I get the look that I am happy with. So... Um, I, this is, you know, the be practical beekeeper kit, um, because I am working on, I had enough things left over from the kit that I wanted to do a soft cover, um, journal, so I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and make a cover for this, and, um, so yeah, I'm just going to play around. I really wanted this to show, but this is going to be the focal point, um, so I actually think I'm going to just probably go with something like that. So in this case what I do, I'm first going to stitch this lace down and then I'll come back and I'll make a decision then if I'm going to, sometimes I might just stitch all of this together and then glue it, but I think this isn't going to be so thick. I can probably just, um, I don't know, we'll see. I'm going to stitch this and then come back and uh, decide on what I do with that. Okay guys, um, what I've ended up doing, I've placed everything the way I thought I wanted it. So I've stitched this little piece of um, vintage trim I've got. And then I thought I'll do some inking um, around the edges um, before I put everything else back together. Um, sometimes I forget this step and then afterwards I kick myself. Um, you get, you know, you get so involved you kind of forget sometimes some of these steps and then you have to go back and do it afterwards and it's not as easy so I thought I'd go ahead and do this and I think I'll actually um, distress that top one along the edge. 
gosh, I've got to get another ink pad. This one's just about out. This is the um, tea dye. Uh, when I first got this color, I didn't like it, but um, this complements this Practical Bee Kit <coughs> very well. And now I actually love that color. It's a really warm um, ink. Okay, what am I doing? Yes, distressing. I ask myself that probably a hundred times a day. And yeah, I will admit to you guys, I talk to myself a lot when I'm when I'm in here um, talking to myself is not as bad. The singing, you would totally cringe because I don't have a great singing voice, but oh my god, when I'm listening to music, I so think I am just the most amazing performing artist there is. <laughs> I do get off into a complete zone in here. I love it. I, I, I enjoy when you get uh, the house to yourself and you can just turn your music up and not worry, you know, because I'm, I, you guys, I think you can tell by now, I get super self-conscious, so I wouldn't really sing. If I'm, if I'm in the car with somebody else, I probably wouldn't do it. My, my kids, I would, just to embarrass them. Um, but, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not one of those people that's comfortable with that out in public, but when I'm on my own, oh yeah, I totally get into it, and I think I'm just on stage someplace performing for this fabulous crowd that just loves my voice, of course. <laughs> Crazy. I don't know. After I've done this, I'm probably going to think, oh, I better go back and do, do all of them. Because it does add a lot to the, um, let me see, I'm, I might want to do that. Probably going to have it about there, and then that. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to distress a couple of these, just a little bit. It all takes time. You, it's just trial and error with all of it. But I do hope that, you know, if any of you have been, been thinking about doing the faux leather and haven't done it, I hope this will inspire you to give it a try. Because I, I do personally think it's one of the nicest techniques for uh, for look on, on a journal cover. It's beautiful. I had tossed around the idea of trying to start working with leather, but I just don't have time at the moment. Maybe down the road I'll get I'll get more time. I don't know if I need to. I'm not going to bother with that because that's not going to get shown. Um, but you guys know, I mean, I'm really, um, if I had time for anything, it's going to be these um, fancy binding stitches. Oh, gosh, I, I love those. The... Um, French, I think there's a French stitch. There's all sorts, aren't there? And uh, that's what I really wish I had more time to devote to because it's just a beautiful effect. Okay, so where are we now? Let's see how this is coming. I left those strings on that. I might snip them off later, but right now I think they're gonna they're gonna look nice. That I'm gonna want about there. This one just hanging just off the edge, I think. And then this one I'm going to come back and probably put about there. And then I'm going to probably add a few more pieces. This I'm feeling like I might need to stitch that to the journal otherwise it's going to flap around too much so okay guys i'm going to run to the machine i'm just going to stitch all of this on in one go okay guys um 
I'm back. There's a couple things I'm still going to want to do. I've got to put that on, embellish it, but then I thought, first things first, I'll show you guys how I do the um, ribbon closure. Let me see if I can get a piece here. I think I'm going to have to do a little bit of pressing, but I think I'll allow that much on that side. What I'm going to do, you just measure your um, whatever you choose. I'm going to use this because I like it. It's a little bit wider. I would have used that, but it's not quite uh, soft enough, I guess. So I'm going to use this one again, and I'm going to stitch it right there and all the way around to here. So this is the section you're going to want to sew your um, your your ribbon to. I'd go about halfway up that flap and then to where you think your spine is going to be, somewhere along there, and just make sure you've got enough, you know, that you're going to be able to... And, and the other thing you'll want to decide is where you're going to tie it. I've been tying them on this side, so that's going to be plenty. It's probably too much, but I like to, to cut too much instead of running myself short. So, anyways, I'm going to have to press this. Then I'm going to stitch it, and we'll be back to then um, decorate this. Okay, guys, I'm back. I've done that, and actually... I, uh, I'm going to correct myself. Stitch it all the way to the edge here because um, that's going to reinforce this as well. So, um, yeah, I corrected myself on that one, guys. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is um, get this positioned and uh, either sew it or, or use a brad. I'm just going to use a brad. Um, let me see if I've got my little pokey thing. That's my the technical name for it, and it's always missing. There we go. There's my pokey thing. That and the bone fo folder. Um, I I always uh, struggle to keep up with those two. There, every you know, it's just those two t tools that you just use all the time, and they they're hard to keep up with. <coughs> So let me just get that positioned. Like I said, you could you could stitch this on. I'm just not going to do it for for this one. I just do a little hole there, and then I'm going to come back, put a couple of little brads, and then inside, if if you want to really finish it off, you can cover cover these. Um, What what what's the I don't know what the what you call the the bottom part of the brad I don't know but if you want to cover that up so you don't have to see it on the inside you can you could easily do that let's get that in there and the other thing you could do. Um, make sure this doesn't slip because if you're using a brad now if you stitch it it'll be more secure but if you're using the brads they do have a tendency to kind of slide around so you could always put a little drip of that um, Fabri-Tac on the bottom of that metal plate and that'll totally keep it you know from sliding around so let's have a look at it again now, obviously, it's not going to close this easy once you get that signature in there, but I think that's really, really pretty. Can you guys see? And then you'll just you'll tie it over here. But now, I like to do something on the back. You could leave it that way, but um, these images are so pretty. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the other half and probably just put that. I I cut these down and then. I won't collage the back. Actually, you know what? I like this one. It's a nice old worn. Let me see if I trim this one up, how we can do that.
Yeah, I kind of like that. I think what I'm going to do, guys, is just run this through and stitch it, and then I'm just going to glue this to the back. <clears throat> so I'll be back. Okay, guys, I've stitched that together, um, and then I've run it around so that it's got a bit more texture. Just going to glue this, and then we're going to start just doing a little bit more to the front. Um, And I'm hoping I can make it through this. I might need to empty my SD card. I don't know. I've kind of lost track of how much I've used. So if it if it go, if it dies, I'll have to uh, come back and carry on. So we'll just put that there. I just kind of like the back, you know, to finish. It's just a bit more interest. Um, so I'm happy with that. Okay, up here. Not going to do a whole lot because this it's a, I think it's really really nice the way it is. I don't want to go overboard, um, but I definitely want this is my ratty um, doily. You guys know I've been working away at that. I definitely want to put that up in the corner. And I'm trying to think if I should put a button. I just really don't think it needs it. There's so much going on in that um, design already, and you got there's quite a bit of texture with the um, the different laces. So I'm I'm actually very happy with that. How that's come out, I might let me put that down just a little bit more. Yeah, I've been trying to study. Um, I've got a couple of. Of books on you know collaging and um, mixed media and I've been trying to spend a little bit more time researching um, that's gonna bug me so I'm gonna just trim that off a little bit on um, you know trying to um, to learn a bit more about texture and collage and so I hope that, you know, you're starting to see a little bit more interest in the covers because I do really, really enjoy covers, the making of the covers. I suppose that's my favorite. And sewing into the signature. I don't know there's something about that I really, really get a lot of pleasure doing. Um, okay, guys, so, you know, I, it's, if you wanted Obviously, you could add a bit more to it. I'm actually pretty happy with, um, I probably have cut that too long. Yeah, I probably have. But anyways, I like that. I, I think that's come out very pretty. Um, there's you a closer look. Got the closure there. And then this is the back. You didn't have to do this, obviously, and, you know, if you wanted to have left that open and made a little secret pocket back there, you could certainly do that. But that's the cover. That's the technique. Um, so I hope that um, that this has been informative and you guys have enjoyed it. I know I'm not great with the tutorials. I'm trying to work on them, so uh, bear with me. But thank you guys so much for stopping by today, and I will see you here again soon. Take care. Bye.